at least the May the Januar. It was January the 1st, 1939, when I first opened my solo workshop in Airbrook. A few days later, I went on a business trip by bicycle, and to my great joy, somebody made me an offer for a prospective business deal for the sum of 17 Swiss francs. Apart from that, even though I tried hard and traveled around the area on my bicycle, not many orders came in. Walter Buchi founds his company with the inheritance from a glassblower, which consisted of old tools and debts with three creditors. In Herbrook, he sets up a small glassblowing shop in a cellar. During the first three years, which are characterized by military service and scarce materials, the young craftsman gathers entrepreneurial experience. When he hears about the properties of a special glass, he starts to search for it, finds it, and sells it to laboratories. Suddenly, from one day to the next, I was a rich man. At least 2,000 Swiss francs was earned, enough to finally move. Walter Buchi moves, with his workshop, to Flaville, into an empty factory building. A customer offers prospective business dealings to anyone who is capable of industrially producing circular spirit levels. After one year of development, Buchi was able to manage this very demanding undertaking. Instead of the promised supply contract, the customer tried to hire Walter Buchi as an employee. Buchi declines the offer. After a short period of silence, and since there are no other alternatives, the customer orders anyway. This was Walter Buchi's first financial success and secured his independence. The several lean years seemed to have given way to the fat years, but this did not let me rest. The first laboratory devices are developed thanks to an active exchange with scientists. The recipe for success, the partner-like customer relationship, is still being applied today and is based on Walter Buchi's policy. To continue applying our skills in such a manner that the confidence of customers worldwide continues to increase. Besides the development of various apparatus, the invention of the vacuum rotary evaporator Rotor Vapor in 1957 was a great success. Buchi becomes a pioneer in the mass production of laboratory equipment. We now total about 38 employees. Whenever somebody asked, though, I said we had a staff of 30 employees. But not too long ago, we counted. And to my surprise, I realized that we actually have 38 employees. I have no idea where they came from. With the move of the Buchi company into the new factory building, ideal conditions for expansion are created. The staff increases along with the increasing demand. Soon there is once again a lack of space. In 1965, an annex is built at the Myers Eckstrasse location. With the death of Walter Buchi, the life of a man whose personal principles have deeply characterized the company philosophy of today's Buchi Labor Technique AG has come to an end. These principles are also responsible for the fact that his lifetime achievement is not conserved, but that it is continuously being renewed and further developed in all areas. Walter Buchi's oldest son, Eugen Buchi, takes over the management. The craft enterprise develops into an industrial company with an international orientation. In 1991, Reinhard Buchi takes over the management. Emphasis is put on the revision of the product design and a customer focus.
the worldwide distribution system and service system are greatly expanded. Subsidiaries are found in the main markets in order to intensify customer proximity. Walter Buchi began in 1939 with an order amounting to 17 Swiss francs. Thanks to ingenuity and skill, the former seller shop developed into today's Buchi Labo Technique AG with a close service and distribution network with partners and own businesses all over the world. And the maxim, at Buchi, the focus is always on the customer and his or her wishes. <laughs>